And today we have Ambrish talking about uh, Green Plum database log analysis. Hello, guys. So, a quick uh, project overview. So, uh, one of the large financial firms uh, who, who is our uh, good uh, customer of the big data suite. Um, had a big uh, green plum outage. And uh, that caused them to miss some SLAs with the regulators, which is like a really bad news for them. And they wanted to uh, use uh, Pivotal Data Science uh, to kind of uh, understand what was the current outage and kind of um, use it to predict the future or kind of future outages, uh, a form of early warning system. So this uh, project was a proof of concept to understand like the problem and scope uh, a greater initiative. So it, uh, you can imagine it like a trailer, like you watch a three minute trailer to, fig uh, to figure out like whether you want to invest 20, uh, two, uh, two hours in a movie. So, so, so this, is, this was kind of a trailer. Um, and there, there are a few uh, pro uh, POC findings and recommendations which I'll go through. Um, as we go along. So just uh, give a very brief overview of what Greenplum Database is. So Green, Greenplum Database is one of our flagship uh, products in the big data suite. And it's a fork of Postgres. It's open source. And it is the, the key fact, the key point here is it's uh, a MPP database, which is like massively parallel processing database. So uh, the basic architecture is that there is a master segment and there are a bunch of seg uh, worker segments. And the parallelism happens when thing, uh, things go in parallel on the worker segments. So for example, um, you have two huge tables, like millions and millions of rows, um, and you want to uh, do a join. So what you do is you distribute these two huge tables across these segments. For example, like you want to join by state. So you distribute both these tables so that each segment has um, data related to one state. And so when you do the join, uh, all the joins will happen in parallel. So a join for California will happen in this node, a join for New York will happen in this node, and so forth. Yeah, any question? Uh, it's fine, yeah. Yes, so if you know uh, how we want to join on, you can do this. If you don't know, then you can, you can uh, distribute randomly, and then you'll get the best parallelization. Um, uh, so, uh, so we had, uh, and also the master node has some orchestration uh, logic to do this, so. And this, uh, I, I wanted to give this uh, overview because uh, because uh, in this project we just worked with the master segment logs, um, and we had uh, kind of 30 columns. So we had enough data, but not like huge data. So because it was a just a two-week uh, POC, um, we worked with a limited data. So first first thing we did was um, we uh, did some data exploration. So there were these uh, six uh, incidents of interest, which the, uh, the Green Plum product team was like, oh, these are some incidents we are interested in. Let's focus on that, because we have a limited time. Let's focus on these. So these six incidents were that. So we, we focused on those, looked at the distributions of these in, uh, incidents over time. And, um, and we found out there were like multiple incidents and errors happening in small bursts. And, uh, and that kind of uh, morphed into a kind of time series analysis. So, so we see here um, a time series of incidents per minute. So what I did was aggregated the uh, various incidents and errors per minute. And we see these different bursts. And we are naming each burst as an event. Uh, and uh, the hypothesis here is like, uh, does event one some way cause event two? Can we find out, like, is there a link between those two? And uh, if, if so, what we can do about it? Um, 
So in order to do that, we also added uh, used um, text anal analysis on stack trace. So of course, all these incidents and errors have come with stack traces, and uh, and it is. Um, uh, when you have huge uh, logs, uh, it's difficult to go grab through all these stack traces and kind of see a higher level of what's happening. So one way of kind of summarizing in what is the stack trace is uh, to do text analytics um, and uh, use text analytics to kind of highlight the distinctive elements of stack traces. So we created these uh, tag clouds using something called as TFIDF. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But, uh, um, but so what we did, we, we had this time series and we had these um, stack clouds for each event and then, and then that led us to figure out some interesting things. So a uh, tag cloud, as I said before, uh, summarizes a text document using a few keywords. So the TFIDF, metric has two parts, the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. So term frequency captures the kind of like how frequent a particular word is in a document. And in your inverse document frequency calculates how unique the word is for all stack traces. So, so for example, the will be frequent in almost all documents. But that doesn't mean anything. For example, if, say, robotics is um, frequent in one document, but the set of documents is not so frequent, that means that the particular document you're looking at is kind of uniquely uh, or uh, uh, kind of summarized with robotics. So. So kind of this is a good metric which captures both the uh, frequency and the uniqueness. Uh, and that, that's exactly what we want. We want to kind of see the distinctive features within a stack trace and then figure out what's going on. And uh, so, the si so you see a tag cloud here, an example tag cloud. And the sizes of the letters are proportional to the TFIDF metric, metrics. So this plpgsql.so is, is um, a word coming in the stack trace again and again for, for a particular event, which is not there in other events. So, so, uh, so this is, uh, the, the, these are the two days of incident. So we had two days of uh, log data and so we identified these bursts of incidents and we tagged them as events. And the hypothesis is like this event over here started some chain of events which kind of ended up here. Um, and for each of these events, we have the tag clouds and then we see uh, and we'll see wh what happens. So this was the first event, day one. And and these are all those incidents which the subject matter experts were want to focus on. So we see that uh, FTS probe failed. This is some event which is happening over here. And then FTS change is followed and then a bunch of other things is followed. And the tag cloud, you can see um, the presence of PLPG SQL.SO. So, so when, I, when I first did this, I, I had no idea what PG, PG, uh, P, PLPG SQL.SO, what was the significance of it? But, but when I put these two graphs in front of the subject matter experts or the product team uh, of Greenplum in this case, they were like, oh yeah, I totally, I totally get this. Like, I can understand why, why this is coming when this is there. So, so what, this, what, what, what the conclusion was that the FTS probe failed denotes master was not responding. So in that architecture, the master was not responding. And um, one of the chief reasons when these, these things happen is when the system is under heavy load. So, so based on this information, it was like, oh, so the master stopped responding. We got a bunch of FTS probe failed, and probably this started the outage. So the second event, um, 
we see some different um, uh, outcome. We see a lot of append only writer dot c. So, so, um, so you can imagine that there, uh, there are a bunch of exceptions in the file append only writer dot c at lines 211, 112, 1, and 1452. So, a lot of append only writer things coming up. And when that comes up, it uh, comes up in the stack traces. This means that data is starting to get corrupted. Uh, so that was the other thing. And then, and then we we see start seeing duplicate key violation on indexes. Now I have been told that when you hear duplicate key violation on indexes, that means something is like really wrong, like it's really bad. So, so and. And incidentally, the duplicate key violations are rela uh, related to data corruption. So, so in a sense, this the, the, a domino effect was happening. We found we, we 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 were able to summarize this domino effect, like heavy load on the system, a bunch of FTS pro failed messages, data starts getting corrupted, culminates with uh, duplicate key violations, and boom. So this is how the dominoes fall. So. Uh, so uh, we we use text analytics and time series analysis to kind of summarize this uh, what was happening, and so uh, the subject, uh, the product team, and the subject matter experts were able to identify like a high level what was happening wrong. But as I said earlier, this was just a trailer. This was just just a two week POC of like. To, uh, to understand what we can do. So based on what we learned, what we can do is like, we can do a sensing and monitoring. So we can have real, ta uh, real time uh, long monitoring of these events. So the events which, uh, the, which were colored, the, those events of in interest, we can have real time log monitoring. We can highlight distinctive elements. So every hour we can generate new uh, tag clouds on the fly and have it on the dashboard. So, so person who is uh, look, uh, keeping at the, looking at the health check of the system can see, oh, what's happening in the last, what happened, what happened in the last hour, and kind of take actions. The other thing is uh, alerting. Uh, so you can have notifications alerting important incidents, and identify patterns in the log data, and when these occur. So. So the thing is that these two things is, is like more like automating uh, the, the manual process uh, we went through in this POC. Um, and that is really uh, uh, useful and uh, adding value. But the, but the real value is this part over here. So, so again, so we, because this was only one outage, we had one data point. So we couldn't do use fancy machine learning on this. Uh, but if we had multiple uh, outages, we could do machine learning and have uh, correlate various events to failures. And in a way, provide a data-driven method to identify new incidents to track. So these were a few incidents which the SMEs were known about, but there might be some incidents which the SMEs do not know about, but the data can tell us. So what, what this part is doing is automating the automation. So it's kind of automating this part. So before this, you will have to come up with metrics and things like that, but when you use data, you will be able to do automated and thus add a lot of value. But there is a catch here. Like uh, the thing is, especially for this, like log da uh, log data incidents. Uh, so it was uh, uh, companies are very uh, d do not want to share their data. So it is very difficult to get a log of lot of outage data from various customers, and we need a bunch of outage data to kind of build this. So what is the next step is that we get a we are, there are we get a lot of support tickets for the green plum database and these support tickets have failures errors and stack traces and we get this from a lot of different customers so so the so the goal the next step here is to uh, use uh, 
these techniques and use uh, uh, on the support tickets and then use machine learning to build these uh, correlation and classification models. Um, and that could be very useful for all our customers. Because, for example, assume that this one customer, they have not uh, had a particular failure yet. But there are other customers uh, who had that failure, and we know about it through analysis, analysis of these logs. So even before any of that happens to this new customer, we can use those uh, metrics to kind of uh, alert them that, oh, something is going wrong here. So fix it before it goes, it goes crazy. So yeah, so that's the next step. Um, so um, an important takeaway here, um, of course, one takeaway is like you can use um, um, data science on your logs, analyze your logs, and do cool things. Awesome. The other is that if there is a metric or a heuristic or a static rule you're using in your app uh, to do some business logic, uh, most of the times data science can help automate the automation. So, uh, and of course, there will be times where uh, the value added by the automation of automation will not be worthwhile to the effort, but many times it will be. So, just like if you are using, if you come across a heuristic, just ask the question whether whether data science would be able to automate it, and and then we we can add more value. So, that was my talk. Any questions? Thanks. Yeah. Right. So one of the huge con consequences. Oh, so the question was, what are the co consequences uh, for our customers if uh, Green Plum goes down? So uh, for this example, the the big financial institution was using Green Plum to uh, generate some reports which they were supposed to give the regulators. It's a financial company, so they have a bunch of regulations and they had to provide that reports. But the Green Plum went down and they missed their SLA. So that's bad news. They, will get, they, they would probably get fined. They would uh, do a lot of things. And it's like any, and this was a production uh, system, right? So, so it's uh, like a outage of production system is bad. Uh, you, we all know that. And it's exactly what uh, happens if your Green Plum cluster goes down. Yes, Anthony? Right. Uh, where the user taps and things like that. And, you know, um, maybe we want to uh, sort of build a model of um, what kinds of user flows are, you know, lead to the most revenue generation or something like that. Right. What would you, I don't see, how would you, how would you automate sort of the creation of these events or something like that? Right. So, so the thing is like, uh, so at the end of the day, uh, so, so what is the metric you use right now? Um, we just have uh, knowledge about where the user goes. Okay. Um, and when like, purchases happen, when revenue gets generated, that kind of a thing. Those are the things that are firing. Right. Those are, but, but then, but then uh, somebody, somebody uh, manually looks at them and then comes up like, oh, if this, hap if this happens, then we'll do this. Is that right? Yeah. Right. And that's a manual process, right? So what we can do is like we can create uh, a bunch of data. Like, for example, if uh, a person did this, bought something. Person did this and did not buy something. And we have a bunch of that data. We use that data. We use or put it through a supervised machine learning algorithm. And we get a model which says, if, if a person does this, it spits out the probability of buy, buying certain other thing. And that is more automated uh, because 
uh, a manual human a uh, uh, manual uh, uh, heuristic uh, has cer only certain reach it has a, you, you only it's a manual process so it's uh, uh, you can't do it more often uh, it only looks at subsets of data it's a human who is doing it so there is bias involved but if you use data you can use the entire data you get more general uh, kind of a model uh, no bias uh, and also it uh, it can be updated like if you set it set it in a such a way that maybe there is some trends right now um, three weeks after this the trends might change and the model if we retrain it again and again will pick up those change but many times what happens is like if there is some heuristic somebody somebody decides and like oh this is the if then else rule we are going to use and then it gets kernelized and then it's not touched for a long time so uh, did, did i answer your question Yeah, no, I was, I was exactly going to say that. Right, so there, there, there are techniques called as uh, change point detection. So, so there is a baseline. So, so for example, it's normal to have some of these um, um, exceptions coming in. So at a rate of like 10 exceptions per week or something like that. And suddenly after something, it's like 70 uh, um, errors per week. And that's just baseline jump. And so we, have, we, we can use the things like change point detection to change like what something has some baseline has changed so you can go back and look at oh what has changed and then you can dig deeper and figure out and um, and once you do that you can also automate that and have those things tracking all the time and then you'll get a error notification like oh your baseline blah blah has changed any more questions Cool, thanks. <laughs>